Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add piping to a seam. Adding piping is a really easy and fun way to add an extra detail to your garments. It's a great way to highlight the design lines and seams in your garment and even bring an extra little bit of color. Here I have a couple examples of garments that I added piping to. These are both pretty old garments. So here's a dress and to just bring a little bit extra to it, I added this hot pink piping. The fabric has a little bit of hot pink in it. Adding the piping just gave a little bit of extra pizzazz and I think really makes it look extra special. For this dress, I used a pretty ordinary chambray fabric, but the design lines of the dress are really interesting. So I found this striped piping and I used it to highlight all the openings around the neckline and shoulder. I think it really makes this otherwise drab dress look pretty special. You can make your own piping or buy it pre-made. There are a lot of different kinds pre-made. I've never made my own before, but I think it's pretty easy. I've read about it. You just cut some bias tape and then wrap the bias tape around a little bit of cord. If you want to make your own, there are a ton of tutorials online that you can Google. There are different kinds of piping that you can use. The one you'll most commonly find is bias tape that's wrapped around a cord. You may also find braided piping. This is maybe more commonly found in upholstery or homeware kind of projects. I'm going to be using a braided piping for this project, but the process is really the same whether you use something that's braided or made with bias tape. One thing to look out for is whether there's a right or wrong side to your piping. So when you're getting ready to sew it on, just be kind of careful and think about which direction your piping is going to be pressed after your garment is all sewn together. So the other thing you really want to be careful about is your seam allowance. Here, my seam allowance is one half inch, but the seam allowance for my piping is only a quarter of an inch. So I've aligned my seam allowance for the piping with the seam allowance for my fabric. Alternately, you can trim off your excess fabric from the seam allowance. I'm gonna show you both ways. So I've set my machine up with my zipper foot and I have a nice narrow zipper foot. There are also piping feet that you can get that are custom made for sewing on piping. So I've moved my needle pretty far to the left and I'm set up for a basting stitch. So I just wanna slide my fabric and piping under my presser foot and I'm going to baste right along the seam allowance or just inside. I, I wanna make sure that this basting stitch won't be visible later. So if your seam allowance is one half inch, you might wanna stitch just slightly less than one half inch. And you just want to make sure you get as close as possible to the edge of the piping. So you want to stitch as close as possible to the seam allowance of the piping and then also keep the piping aligned. So one way to do that would be to draw a line right on your fabric where you want the edge of the piping to sit. And you can use pins if it's helpful or just guide it as you stitch. So the most important thing in this first basting step is just to make sure that you have your piping aligned in the correct position because once we put on our other piece of fabric, we'll be stitching at our actual seam allowance and that will need to be really accurate. Okay, so we have our piping basted on here and I didn't do a perfect job of basting really close to my piping, but that's okay. 
When I come back and I put my other piece of fabric on here, I'll make sure to get as close to that seam allowance as possible. This basting stitch is really just intended to get your piping in place, hold it stable, and make sure it's in the correct position before we attach our second piece of fabric. So here's another example, and for this one, I have trimmed away one quarter inch of my seam allowance so I can line up the edge of my piping right with the raw edge of the fabric and then just stitch at a one quarter inch. Whether you trim away your seam allowance or not is just personal preference. I've added some pins on here to hold it in place and just like with the other one I'm going to baste it and make sure that I get the raw edge and my piping edge lined up. Okay, that piping is now in place. I'm making a pocket here, and here's the other side of my pocket, so I'm just going to now go and stitch this. So I'll put a few pins in. So I've moved my needle a little bit farther to the left, and I've also changed the stitch length to a normal stitch length. And now I'm going to be stitching my actual seam. So if you unfold this, you can see what your piping will look like after you stitch it. Let's just go ahead and attach it. So for this one, I really want to make sure that I stitch an accurate seam allowance and get as close to that edge of the piping as I can. So I'm just using my finger right here to kind of push the piping up against this edge because um, sometimes, you know, because there's a lump right here, it'll want to move away. If you have that piping foot, the piping will go inside the foot and it, you can get a much more accurate attachment that way. Um, but if you don't have a piping foot, this is how you would do it. So make sure to press this nicely as you do with every seam and then you can continue on sewing your garment. I've just shown you how to attach piping to a flat piece of fabric, but sometimes you'll want to attach it to a piece that's in the round, like at the end of a sleeve. So what you want to do is you get your sleeve in the round and then at the seam or the bottom section pin your piping on and right here is the seam line and I want to have my piping going off into the seam allowance so it's kind of angled away and I'm going to baste it on. So same as before using my zipper foot or using your piping foot and we're, when we start we're going to start kind of towards the edge of the fabric and then go inwards and get to our seam allowance. So now we're just going to go all the way around like we would do when it's flat. So here I'm approaching this back side seam again and I'm going to do the same thing. I just want to angle my piping so that when it overlaps, this overlap is, kind of, is going to be hidden in the seam. So just angle it away down towards the raw edge. So the overlap could be a little more centered over this seam line, but it's, you know, on the underside, so I don't think it's a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and attach my cuff and proceed as normal. I hope that you found that tutorial helpful. In this video, I was adding piping to my Tassi robe. It's a draft-it-yourself pattern, meaning no pattern pieces are actually included in the pattern. 
but I will teach you how to draft a pattern for your custom size. A robe is a really nice garment to add piping to, and it's perfect for staying at home and lounging or sewing. I will put a link in the show notes so that you can check out the pattern. And let me know in the comments if you use this tutorial and have added any piping to your garments. I'd love to hear about it. And if you haven't already, I'd be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button down below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing. Thank you.